looking at the top head coaching candidates, the top openings plus power rankings of all 14 NFL playoff teams. And will top prospects skip the college football playoff moving forward? You are locked on NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to a Wednesday edition of Locked On NFL. He's Tony Wiggins. I'm James Erpine, and we are stacked, packed, and loaded on a Wednesday. Like I said, we're going to start with some head coaching candidates. Then Power rankings. We do power rankings every week here during the regular season, and it's going to continue uh, on this Wednesday edition with a power ranking of the playoff teams before we dive into what would be a really controversial topic if it ever, ever happened in a highly debated one uh, at the end with uh, what happened on Monday night and key injuries. And uh, really, I can't wait to, to discuss that with you, Tony, but uh, let's dive in. You're uh, one of the uh, many cities you cover the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right. And um, uh, many cities, many teams uh, that are looking for a new head coach, Minnesota in that boat, Chicago in that boat. Uh, so we could talk about openings but uh, and candidates because I, I think it's uh, just Jacksonville, for example. It seems like they're casting a pretty wide net, and, and I wouldn't be shocked at all, especially with no, like, to me, clear-cut top candidate that's just head and shoulders above the rest. Right. Most of these teams with vacancies don't do the same thing. The Jaguars have a, 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 an interesting dilemma because they also have Trent Baalke as the uh, incumbent uh, general manager, and no one wants him. And, I mean, he, I, I haven't seen one media person, no one from around the league, support Trent Baalke being retained as the GM here. And there are rumors, Jay Glazer even reported that, the coaches that have been interviewing don't want to work with him. So uh, it's odd, but that Jacksonville is odd. They're, they're just odd on every single thing that they do. So I'm, I'm just really glad now that people are seeing it. It's not the fans. It's not the city. It's the leadership. It's, it's weird. It's quirky. And no matter where you put uh, this team under the current administration, you're going to get weird and quirky. They, I, they did this years ago. They had, uh, Todd Wash, who had served as the interim defensive coordinator, he sat in on the defensive coordinator interviews, and then they gave him the job. It's like it, it's, it's it's the strangest, weird. And I, don't you laugh because y'all had problems up in Cincinnati with front office stuff too. So I know you're gonna laugh, but you can't. You got to laugh and keep from crying if you're a Jaguar fan. But I've never in my life seen something <laughs> so dysfunctional than than what is going on here. Oh no, I. Sure. You know, sometimes you got to laugh. You're right to keep from crying. Right. And that's uh, that that's part of it. And yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I do think it's uh, it's interesting. You look at these openings to me. It's tough, man, because the Broncos on paper seem like the best job because yeah. I think they're going to make a run at one of these these quarterbacks, these high end quarterbacks. I think they have the ammo to do so. Uh, George Payton, certainly a, an intriguing GM. They have a, a culture, a history of winning there. At the same time, you look at that division and it's tough. I mean, Chargers, Justin Herbert, everyone's in, in an uproar that they didn't make the playoffs. You have the Chiefs that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, the Raiders have been scrappy. So it's, uh, you, you know, I, I still think that might be the top one. But what's crazy to me, if, if the Jaguars were to say, all right, we're going to give you whatever you want, I think they could get their top choice and they could beat out, let's say the Bears try to do that or uh, the Vikings or, or the Dolphins. You look at it, Trevor Lawrence, and he flashed week 18, which will matter, Yep, is more intriguing than any of the quarterbacks, including Justin Fields, sorry, Chicago, uh, that are in any of these other cities. And so that part of it matters. And so Jacksonville needs to use that to their advantage to lure in to me. And I talked to you about this what, last week, right? Marvin right. Lewis makes sense. I know you talked about unlocked on Jaguars, uh, Jim Caldwell. I want to see both of those dudes back in the NFL because I see some of these head coaching jobs that have been given out. And it's like, man, I think those guys can uh, coach at a high level and in either restore uh, 
function to the dysfunction in some of these right. organizations yeah. uh, or, or get these organizations to another level? Well, what's crazy is you, you try not to make it about race or you try not to make it about perception because of who guys are. But every time you, you look, as much as you want to go around that because you hope that's not what it is, it, mm -hmm. it always seems like there's a dude getting the short end of the stick. And, uh, and he always looks like me. And uh, you think about Pep Hamilton. Pep Hamilton has been the quarterback whisperer. Pep mm -hmm. Hamilton had the reputation of, of being that. And then when Justin Herbert was a rookie and shocked the world with how good he was. And now Pep Hamilton is doing the same thing. They're actually people that really believe that Davis Mills is going to be the quarterback for Houston because of the job that Pep Hamilton has done. So now he's going to finally get an interview in Carolina to be the Panthers OC. But when you look around the league, man, you just see guys like Brendan Staley. All of a sudden he was just this, this dude out of nowhere who five years ago was coaching some college you, you hadn't heard of. But then I don't hear D'Amico Ryan's his name. And look what the job that he's done out in San Francisco this year as a defensive mm -hmm. coordinator, longtime NFL player, guy who played in the league, guy who's coached in the league. So, yeah, man, you, you know, you want that part of it to go away. But really, you want it to go away because these teams are actually missing out. And it doesn't mean that there won't ever be any white coaches. That's, that's ridiculous. Because mm -hmm. I, I do think these coaching trees, the Shanahan and the McVay coaching trees, they're doing everything that everyone thinks that they're supposed to do. But we just want to see some fresh blood. We want to see some new people. You, it's sad when you look at Jim Caldwell's record and mm -hmm. and realize that they ran him out after a couple of years and they haven't won anything similar to that ever. And then you look at the guys, Matt Patricia and all of these guys that keep that keep the job. It, it's crazy. Yeah. I, and honestly, the biggest shock of the week to me, of the week, of the month, of the year, I don't, I don't know, is the Brian Flores deal. I mean – I, look, I get it. They beat some scrub teams down the stretch, but they still competed their ass off. They beat the Patriots this past week. They finished above 500 with a quarterback that I'm still not sure about. And uh, communication's the issue. To me, I'm trying to get Brian Flores if I'm Jackson, if, I, if I'm all these teams, really, because it's like, Miami, what are you doing? What are you thinking? And, um, and, and so, look, I get it. He didn't make the playoffs. But to your point, even those that want to ignore the the race topic, it's hard to when Brian Flores has a, a, a well above 500 record over the past couple of seasons after his first year in Miami. Clearly, they're headed in the right direction. They didn't get the quarterback right in the 2020 draft. And say what you want about Tua, they should have drafted Justin Herbert right. and still finished above 500 back-to-back -back years. That, that matters, and I think he did a good job there overall. I think it came down to him and Chris Greer and, and the ownership chose Chris Greer, the GM. And uh, yeah. in terms of Jacksonville, the media and the fans here are sending mixed messages. They want, and I talked about this on my podcast just yesterday, they want an offensive oriented guy. And um, I think anything that makes you shrink your pool of people because yep. of some sort of precondition, I don't think yep. is good when you've won Agreed. four games in two years. Because when I look around the league and I look at Mike Vrabel, he's a defensive coach, right? Mm -hmm. And I look at some of these other coaches that are in the playoffs and they're not offensive coaches, whether it's Mike Tomlin or, of course, Bill Belichick. And I think folks get it twisted that just because a guy used to play quarterback or he's an offensive coach and he becomes a head coach, that he's going to walk around the facility holding the hand of the quarterback all day long. And they're going to – that is not the way it works because if he's doing sure. that – then that means there's some other stuff that's not going on that has to happen. When you're the head coach, you are the head coach. You don't have time to – I don't know why people act like it's going to be like Burton and Ernie walking around like they're going to be tied at the hip. That's not the way that works. Yeah, the offensive coordinator is still going to matter. Like here in Cincinnati, Zach Taylor calls the plays. Brian Callahan does a ton of game planning, and they're you know interlocked. And that's why if I'm an NFL team, by the way, you want to talk about an offensive mind, Brian Callahan has been there, done that in a lot of different areas. I, I would interview him. I, it might be a year early, but I would interview him uh, and, and at least uh, try to get a read on him. So it, it, it's going to be interesting. It really is. But uh, despite, you know, all these teams looking for head coaches, there are still 14 teams alive, 14 teams thinking Super Bowl, but maybe 14. We'll see. But uh, we're going to power rank all 14 playoff teams 
coming up right here next on Locked On NFL. But first, I got to tell you about Built Bar, the number one protein bar on the planet. I eat a Built Bar each and every day. And whether you're looking for a protein punch right after a workout, maybe you just want a healthy midday snack, Built Bar has a flavor, has a taste that you're going to love because each bar covered in 100% real chocolate. They're high in protein, low in sugar, low in macros, perfect for you. So check them out right now at built.com. Use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. It's that simple. To get the best protein bar on the planet, all you got to do is go to built.com. Promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off. Again, promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, Tony, let's uh, let's dive in here because, boy, oh, boy, we, we always do power rankings on this show every week of the right. season. And now the the season is uh, has reached the, the fun part in my eyes. And, and maybe it's fun because the team I cover is still alive in the Bengals, and we'll see how far they can go. But uh, let, let's power rank these teams. And uh, I don't think it's going to be as simple as where they're seated. Right. I think that I there's – and, and that's the fun part, right? So let's uh, – I, I want to start with you. You, uh, Who do you have as – should we go worst to first or should worst, we start at the top and go down? Worst to first. That's the easiest way for me. I'm sitting right, here looking at go, my list. But let's go uh, worst to first. Who's the worst of the 14 teams in the playoffs? I think we're going to agree on this one, but go ahead. Pittsburgh. Yep. <laughs> I know that I know that doesn't make you upset to say that either. It, 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 yeah, it's just funny to me because man, I you know I I saw them twice this year. Never really thought they were a playoff team, and then the Chargers and uh, Raiders almost tie on Monday night, and somehow they squeak into the playoffs. Dude, just every, to get the Chiefs, the Colts, the Colts getting beat by Jacksonville. Every single thing that had to happen happened for these dudes yeah. to make the playoffs, and uh, they had a nine percent chance when they woke up Sunday morning to make it. And they made it. So Pittsburgh is the worst. Uh, my next worst is uh, I'm gonna go with Philly. Yeah, and and uh, I I think you're right. Uh, you know, looking at these teams, it's like all right. Mm. So 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 far we have gone because those are the two seven seeds. I agree with you though. I think it's Philadelphia. They're uh, it, and not saying that they can't give the uh, the Bucks a battle because to me, I was thinking about this this morning. And I saw one of the teases on one of these national shows, like how the Eagles can upset the Bucks. And last year, Taylor Heineke gave the Bucks all they could yeah. handle, that defense. Yeah. Like he fared better than some of these other teams. And it was because of his mobility, I thought, and his playmaking ability. And Jalen Hurts can certainly do that. So is there a scenario where the Eagles go into Tampa Bay and, and give that Bucks defense all they can handle? I think so. It's just – Will they be able to slow down Tom Brady? And I know it's a shorthanded Bucks offense, but they still got playmakers to get by the Eagles. So I agree with you. It's uh, 13 Philadelphia for me. I thought uh, Bruce Arians is out of his mind saying that Tom Brady should be the MVP until I looked up and saw that he had 5,000 yards passing and 43 touchdowns. I did not know that statistically he was that good all year. He's better I, than Rodgers. Yeah, yeah. I did, I did not know, even though Rodgers doesn't have very many turnovers, but yep. there were some games where Rodgers only had 180, 200 yards. I did not know this dude went for 5,000 yards. It's, it's it's amazing. All right, so moving up. At some point, I'm going to throw a shocker to you, but this one ain't going to be it. I'm going to go with the Raiders. As Man, what are you – you copying me? I have the Raiders written down here. I, Jeez, oh, Pete. I agree with you um, I, because I think they have a good, not great quarterback. I think they have good edge rushers, um, but there's question marks on that offensive line. Will they be able to run the ball consistently? And, um, you know, Darren Waller's been banged up uh, at times this year. So, yeah, I think uh, I think the Raiders at a five seed, I like both six seeds better, the the Patriots and the San Francisco 49ers. I actually like the 49ers probably better than you, so I'm going to hold off on putting them in. I'm gonna tell oh, you yeah, what. I haven't put them in yet. So we're, we're on 11 right now. So our, right now it's Steelers, Eagles, Raiders. Who's your 11th team? New England. And, and it's because mm. it's it not it's not defensively. It's not wow. because I don't trust the coach. Um, as we saw wow. in the national championship game last night, once the big play threat goes away, it makes the game so much easier for everyone else. And um, Belichick, Saban, same thing. But once Alabama was 
they weren't able to make a one play score. I really felt like Georgia had them. And, and I think because I've seen too many games this year where they just don't throw the ball down the field enough. So it's almost as if everything has to be perfect in other ways. And, and to me, that's almost unfair to everyone else, but maybe they need to loosen up and trust uh, that kid a little bit more. I don't see how he's ever going to get better. I think this is just who he is. And unless they figure it out, they're going to always struggle with him at quarterback, especially when it comes to making plays down the field. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's fair. I'm going to Arizona. <laughs> I think that they are just done. I was so high on them earlier this year, but no DeAndre Hopkins. Offense appears to have taken a step back. I don't trust Cliff Kingsbury, so it's not like I could say, well, at least they have Bill Belichick. I don't buy that. Yeah, they're getting J.J. Watt back. I think that pass rush can make some plays. My guy, A.J. Green, uh, would love to see him get a playoff win or make a playoff run, but I just don't see it. So I, I have Arizona at 11. 10 for me is tough because, you know, you're right that, you know, the Patriots, certainly a contender here. Um, but, who? I think, yeah, I, I have to. I have to go with the Patriots. I, I was tough. I, I was totally on my thumbs there thinking about the 49ers, but it, it's got to be the Patriots because of the weapons, because of what Debo Samuel, with that run game, what George Kittle can do. I think they could go toe-to-toe with an Aaron Rodgers if they need to. All uh, right. or, or with – go ahead. So in that, in, in, in that scenario, mm-hmm. I'm going I'm to make Buffalo my next team. I don't trust them. I, I, wow. They've they stumbled and bumbled around too much this year. I just do not trust them. I don't. Something's happened with Brian Dabo. Sort of the same thing that happened with Eric Bieniemy early in the year. Those two were the guys you thought would be mentioned for all these job, jobs, even though Dabo is getting interviews now. But they just don't seem like the same team that they were uh, a year ago when they were so dangerous. Yeah. No, that that's fair. And I, that's the thing is I don't want to overlook them, but they've had some injuries. You know, you, you lose your top cornerback. It's tough. So uh, we we're starting to differ a little bit uh, and we'll go through these teams. Um, so let's, let's move to it when we finish this exercise, but power ranking them. Uh, number nine, you ready for this? The Dallas Cowboys. Ooh, that's a shocker. Um I think that one, I it, I don't know why they played Dak the other night, and I know they beat Philadelphia, beat the drums off the Eagles. That that was weird to me. Um, I don't know. I I I bought them a couple weeks ago. I'm kind of selling them now. And uh, who, who do they got? Oh, is is that all oh, the 49ers? Upset yeah. special. The 49ers yeah. handle business this week, even though I put the Cowboys ahead of them in the power rankings. That's uh that's one that I like. So uh, I'll put the Cowboys at number nine. All right, after that, I'm going to go with uh, – I actually have the 49ers last in a while, so I'm going to go with the Rams, man. I don't I don't, I don't, I don't trust them. I don't trust them either. Um, Matt Stafford. It, it's just – if the 49ers beat them, if the 49ers beat Dallas, the Rams want no parts. You hear me? They yeah. want no parts of the 49ers. They, they had them – they were down – they were up 17 nothing, and the 49ers walked them down the other day, so – I'm going to go with the Rams, and that's because, like I said, I just don't trust them. Yeah. No, I I, I get that. Um, to me, my eighth team, uh, hmm. I think I have to go with the team I cover, the Bengals at number eight. Um, they're good. I see a path where they could make a run. Uh, certainly have a talented quarterback, but I don't trust the offensive line, and I still have question marks about the coaching. And will they be able to get enough heat on opposing quarterbacks? So I put them at eight. Uh, at seven, I would put the Bills, the team that you mentioned. I think you had them at nine. Um, you know, I think they have a good quarterback, uh, really good home field advantage. I could see them making a run. I could also see them losing to New England this week. Um, and, and so that's uh, – that. Or, or no, wait. No, I don't have New England up there yet. So I got to put the Patriots seven, Bills six. Right. I was wondering what – you think the Patriots going to Super Bowl or something, right? No, 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 no. I, I forgot about Bill because of the Bills. Patriots seven, Bills six. Um and I could swap the the Bengals and Patriots there. It wouldn't really matter. I think either team could make a run, but uh, they both have their flaws. Shocker, who did not make my top five. You ready? Go ahead. The Bucks. Nope. They're too banged up. And I oh know. Oh my God. I know they got. Are you Brady. kidding me? No, I no. I just saw them, man. They struggle too much, man. And they, they've been struggling, and and the whole AB. He's from the pit, not the palace, and guys retweeting out stuff and. Uh, 
it's just it's too much happening. There's just too much going on with the injuries. Playoff Lenny ain't there. I just I, I just don't buy it. No Chris Godwin, no AB. I think they're going to be one dimensional in the passing game downfield. Um, I just do think teams are going to try to pressure them up the middle also. So I'm out. I'm out on Tampa. I don't think they can run the ball either. My God. Okay. Well, I have the Bucks much higher because I uh, I know what the goat can do, but that's fine. If you don't think Scotty Miller can get it done, well, no. Scoot. We'll, we'll see. We'll see who can scoot all the way to the NFC title game again. Anyways, uh, that being said, I got the Rams five, uh, and we're up against it, so I'll go through here. My top five: the Rams five, Titans four, Bucks three, Chiefs two, Packers one. I think the Packers clearly the favorite right now, um, but I think they can be beat. And that's what's fun here is if you told me like the 49ers made a Super Bowl run uh, or the Bengals made a Super Bowl run or the Bills or, um, you know, the, those teams at the bottom, Steelers, Eagles, Raiders, I don't expect that. Cardinals, I think they're too banged up. But there are certainly teams on this list. Even the Cowboys, I could see the path in, in all of the top five. So with that, Tony, what uh, what's your top five? Cincinnati's my fifth team. I do think that wow. when you can score the way that they score – uh, new kids on the block. Uh, my fourth team is the 49ers. I think they're super, super dangerous because they know exactly who they are. My third team would be the Chiefs. Number two is the Titans, and number one would be Green Bay. You like the Titans way too damn much. You think the Titans are ahead of the Bucks? Yep. Oh my god, I do. I okay. Meanwhile, mainly, I was mainly thinking, too, I don't know if they could beat the Bucks, but they don't play in the same conference. So, I was thinking that the, the Bengals got a good draw. Like if, if it's chalk this week and the Bills beat the Patriots to, to play KC and the Bengals beat the Raiders to go to Nashville to play the Titans, I'm like, oh, well, the Bengals could beat the Titans. Yeah, they can. So that's kind of okay. They absolutely so can. Okay. So you see the path there. You just okay. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. well, that's but that's uh that's why again my top five Packers, Chiefs, Bucks, Titans, Rams. What was your top five? Uh Green Bay, Tennessee, Kansas City, 49ers, and Bengals. Be interesting to see how it plays out. Up next, will top stars say no, no, no to the CFP in the future? But first, I gotta tell you about Get Upside, the incredible app that is gonna save you money at the pump every time you fill up. Yeah. It's a free app. It's called Get Upside. Download it right now. Uh, whether you have an iPhone, you can download it in the App Store, or you have an Android, Google Play. And it's uh, it's really convenient, easy to use, and you're going to get up to $0.25 cents off per gallon every time you fill up. And right now with promo code TOUCHDOWN, you're going to get a bonus $0.25 cents off on your first fill up. That's up to $0.50 cents off per gallon on your first fill up. All you have to do, download the Get Upside app, use promo code TOUCHDOWN, and uh, sign up. It's free. You can get cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, get Amazon gift cards. Take advantage of it now. You have to fill up anyway. You might as well save some money while you do it. Download GetUpside and use promo code TOUCHDOWN. And BetOnline would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march through the playoffs and beyond. BetOnline remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code, which is locked on to get started from football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online is where the game starts. All right, man. So uh, last or oh, two nights ago in the mm -hmm. college football playoffs, uh, one thing I don't like, and I and I and I did bring this up to someone prior to the game. I said injuries. So in my in my support for a college football playoff, I said football is a game of attrition, right? Whoever yep. can whoever can last is the gladiator sport. Whoever can last. Now, the injuries, I, I, I think, come with the game. The ones that come with the game are you hit a guy across the bow real hard and you break his ribs. You did that. But when a guy just steps funny on some carpet, I hate those things, man. And so now we've seen two major championships yeah. that I don't think the best team actually won if they were healthy. Like 
I think if either Kyrie or Harden is available, you don't have to worry about Kevin Durant's toenail in game seven yeah. being on the line. Mm-hmm. They they beat him with just one of those guys healthy. With two of them healthy, they probably wipe yeah. him out in five games. So yep. um, now last night, the one guy that could not afford to be hurt at the one position was Jameson Williams, or two nights ago. And he got hurt. And once he got hurt, I mentioned earlier in the program, the game totally changed. And then Dan Lanning, the defense coordinator, told his player, hey, one's gone. One's gone. Mm-hmm. It's it's it's, yep. it's changed now. Because now you know there's no big play threat. And Georgia won because they hit two or three big plays. Are we going to get to the point where we see guys not only opt out of bowl games, but are we going to see guys who have a big-time future in the NFL opt out of national championship games? Well, you saw Alabama's two other wide receivers go down in these this college football playoff, right? Um, or, or right before the in the SEC title game and then um, in the, the national championship. Look. I think there is a scenario and it's going to take a bold player. It's going to take a player that's confident and uh, expects to be in the top five, but I don't know if I blame them. I'd get it. And I'm not saying that's what I would do because it, man, are you, you think it's controversial now to opt out of a bowl game. It would lead every debate show, every podcast for a day, two days, week. It depends on the podcast, but my Lord, that being said, are, are you we saying, or, and are you telling me that, and, and he can overcome that injury, no doubt about it. Injuries are a part of football. I understand, but I couldn't help but think of Jalen Waddle last year when he was, you know, limping around in, in the national title game for for Alabama. You remember that? And it yep. was like, man, what what is he doing? And it didn't cost him, right? He set the rookie record for receptions this year, but it's a dangerous game doing that. And um, wouldn't be shocked at all. In, yeah, Nick in, said he wanted this, to play. It, yeah, in this in this climate with NIL, where a player sits back, stops a, a second, and says, "All right, I've had a record-setting season. I'm going to be, let's say, the third pick or the fifth fifth pick. Worst case, I don't think it's worth it, and it will be hotly debated. There will be people that defend it. There will be people that rip that player. I do think it is coming though, so buckle up, and it might be coming sooner rather than later. I don't think it'll happen in a championship scenario, and I'll tell you why." Because everybody wants a title. At some level, when you have a chance to win, it's hard, man. So mm-hmm. I don't think it'll ever happen. And I think the NIL stuff actually helps my cause because if they're getting paid, they're not going to – it's not as if they're sitting there waiting to get to the money, at least legally, because we know a lot of those guys got paid anyway. But there's also this thing called an insurance policy. Mm-hmm. You can NIL – you can get a sponsorship probably for an insurance policy, or you can take your own insurance policy out with Lloyds of London. But I just know a guy like Jameson Williams, he wasn't, he was the fourth guy at Ohio State, number four. Mm-hmm. So, what was his draft prospects prior to last season? I don't know if they were high, high enough to think that he was going to be a top 10 pick like everyone kind of thinks he is now. But you do, man, you hate it for those guys. You hate it for those mm-hmm. guys. And, when people say kids don't uh, love the game and I don't like that. And I also don't like it when the same people that claim that folks who want an expanded playoff are selfish because they just want to see more football are the same people who will criticize those kids for not playing a meaningless bowl game. So it's Mm -hmm. almost as like, like who really? So a meaningless game is, to you or to the critic, a meaningless game is one that actually gives us an on-field champion the way every other team sport at every other level in the whole world does, except ages 18 to 22 in Power 5 football. Are you kidding me? So that's ridiculous to think that. And the other part is, is oh, but it's an honor to play in a bowl game. That means mm-hmm. absolutely diddly-poo as far as a team is concerned and the title. So I think guys play for championships. So I don't think uh, the opportunity to win a championship. And if you are the guy that opts out and then your team loses. Mm-hmm. And, it's and, it's and, something and about it, being an alumni. Now people love going back. Sure. You know? no, no doubt. I think they're, and it's going to take a specific scenario, right? Where maybe the guy's been banged up or he suffered injuries in the past, but he's healthy. He's good to go. Something. But I just never say never, and is it is going to be? I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine if if Hutchinson, let's say from Michigan, right, was just like, nah, 
<laughs> no, not it kind of happened with Georgia. Bosa. Nick Bosa almost sort of did it. He got hurt early in the year, and he was like, "Man, it's my hamstring. I'm out of here." And yeah, yeah. he might have been able to come back had they been in position to, to contend. I think they actually did, if I'm not mistaken. They were hanging around there, but he didn't come back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, but but he had a legitimate bad injury. So I yeah, and and so it'll be a specific way. But I I, I still I would never say never. And um, yeah, with Jameson Williams, man, I it uh, I was hoping it was just his MCL. As we record this, we haven't heard officially, but a lot of the the doctors that saw the video I know said that uh, it looked like ACL too. So hopefully not. Hopefully it's just a you know a you know a six week injury or something like that. But um, I think wouldn't be shocked. Wouldn't yeah. shock me if it's six months. I think he'll still get drafted in the top twenty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I I agree with you. I mean that. There's so many of these teams that can use a threat like him. And um, no, it, look, when you've seen what Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase specifically have done to change right. their offenses, whew, you're going to want to add a playmaker if you think that that guy is there. And Jamison Williams is certainly, uh, I don't know if he's in that class, but he's certainly going to be taken high. Real quick, let me ask you this. I know it's off mm -hmm. off, off uh, subject. Yeah. How many points does the Joe Burrow LSU team score against that Georgia defense? Oh, 60. <laughs> Dude, that team's – Yeah, unreal. it's unreal. Like, in, in looking back, they were that damn good. Like Burrow is, is going to get MVP votes. Jamar Chase should be Offensive Rookie of the Year. Justin Jefferson has had the best two-year stretch of any wide receiver in the NFL, it looks like. Uh, certainly best first two years. Um, it, it's just – wild and, and that doesn't take into account you know all of the other players that they had um first round running back who seems to be you know the chief's best option at running back right now so they, still not uh, the most they, talented team i've ever seen though who is it you talking about miami way back oh one i can yeah. just name it i can just tell you their running backs they were so good at running back they moved willis mcgahee to fullback they had clinton porter's frank Gore, willis mcgahee who, who I, do you think wins that? Who do you think wins that matchup? Because I would still take LSU because of the no, no, I, I take Miami because of the defense. Oh. They had two first round corners. They had Dan Morgan at linebacker, Jonathan Vilma. Oh they had Vince Wilfork. Come on now, they, they had Ed Reed and Sean Taylor. I'm 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 dead serious now. That I team, know. I remember they, that team. They had DJ Williams at linebacker. Uh, let me tell you the the their 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 wide receivers. Now, even though Santana Moss and Reggie Wayne left the year before. Mm -hmm. They had Andre Johnson, Keller Winslow, yep. and Jeremy Shockey. Yep. It's unreal, yep. man. It's just un un unfreaking real. Brian McKinney. That team, that team was just good. But the way that they played, they didn't air everything out. They ran the ball. They balanced. They were like that. They were like the '90s Dallas Cowboys. That's what they were. Yeah. I don't know, man. It would be interesting. It, I, yeah. I just and maybe it's you know, uh, Regency by. I, I just think, man, if uh, that LSU team was just. Spread them out. We're good. I'm gonna diagnose it, and we'll we'll make a play. You know, we'll good. I think I think the 13 Seminoles give the LSU team a run. The Jameis team that barely beat Auburn. Because I need you to take your I need you to take your Florida State glasses off now. No, no, I want you to listen to me. At one point, I think two years after that game, they're all 22 were in the National Football. You need great players. They had Darby. Their 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 defensive backs was Darby. Uh, P.J. Williams, Jalen Ramsey, and LaMarcus Joyner. Come on now. Telvin Smith, that linebacker, they had, they were loaded, bro. They were absolutely loaded. <laughs> I can't. You, you, I, I get it with Miami, I do, and then you're <laughs> – Oh, my God. I said they uh, give anyway. them a run. I didn't say they beat them. Okay. That's I said true. They, I said they give them a run. Yeah. I just, All right, man. We don't we don't cover the gamut on here on Locked on NFL. See, we, we yeah, gave, get us out of here. I don't know what we this we we gave people behind the business. This is the kind of stuff that we do all the time. And I don't know if y'all can tell. I'm sick as hell, man. I'm sitting here on medication. Uh, y'all probably thought I've been smoking, but no, I'm not smoking. I'm on uh I'm on some meds, man. I gotta go get in, in the bed and sweat this stuff out. That's why I'm sitting pretty here long soon sleeve. You're gonna say it's 80 yeah, degrees pretty... outside. I'm sitting in long sleeve and a and a and a damn skull cap like i'm up in michigan somewhere so that's what hey that's what i do when i'm sick i sweat it out so you got, sweat you got it the out, right, right mindset i pretty soon if we keep recording you're gonna say that the 2021 2022 dallas cowboys are the best team you've ever seen in the league i can't have you say that tony we gotta yeah. get the hell out of here
Yeah, man, we gone, man. All right, man, go eat some Skyline chili for me because it'll make me feel better all the way down here. For Tony Wiggins, James Rapine, you guys keep taking care of each other. We'll see you next time here. And thanks for making us your first listen.